Okay, okay. KTT, new episode once every two weeks. I am Drift. I'm joined by my co-host. It's Jiro. Wagwan Mandem. Okie doke. And this time we're going to start off with Kaiju number eight. I'm going to be talking about JJK and I believe Boruto. Mm-hmm. Cool. So before we get into the episode proper, naturally, all of the YouTube things, people, like, comment, subscribe, please and thank you. All love. We'll begin. So... Mm-hmm. We recently watched Kaiju number eight. What are your thoughts? G world building, characters. What are your thoughts? World building, good. It's not every day you see some Godzilla like sh- um happening. Sound like these men have had to be dealing with like Kaiju for quite a while now. So usual monster of the week type sh- It's all of a sudden portal opened up and you know monsters just start pouring out and you know it's like usually within like five years or ten years or something like that but these might have been dealing with this from way back in the day so in terms of world building i like that um them turning the monsters into weapons you could have seen that come if you played monster hunter you don't know that's just like the way of the world so also good there um storyline wise i'm interested i want to see what happens with kafka um, and the rest of the team. What is it? Unit 3 or some shit like that. Um, I want to see all of that. I want to see how all of that goes. Um, I do have some issues with some of the stuff that happens in the series. Like, not major problems, but like, um, there are times when I wish Ka- Kafka would like really lock in and it didn't really get those moments there. So it, it, it kind of gives me like, at the moment anyway, from just like the first 13 I've seen, it kind of gives me like a One Punch Man vibe. So it's like, Kafka will come in as Kaiju number eight and he'll just one punch anything to fucking death. But yeah, everybody else in the squad, they'll be doing all the flippy whippy shit and like pulling up the cool moves and like getting the cool moments and whatever. But overall, overall, I like it. Okay. And uh, what are your thoughts on the characters? Characters? You talk about like design or just like how they are, how they're presented? However you choose to interpret the question, my bro. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, again, um, probably Kafka's going to have to bear the brunt of this. It's like that whole, that bro is like entirely inappropriate. You know what I'm saying? So thinking back to, uh, what was it? After Kaiju number 10, was it? Um, The red one, Kaiju number 10. So after they'd done the beef there and he was like helping them figure out the monster's weakness and all that kind of stuff. And then he got bumped up from like a cadet to like an official officer it's kaiju number 10 the red one the red one the red sword looking one okay. yeah so he's eight nine is you know mushroom head and the red one i'm assuming is 10 okay yeah so um yeah so so you know light spoilers um i don't, he gets, I don't think the mushroom one was on um, a numbered kaiju i think it was just a giant mushroom kaiju no 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 no, no. kaiju number nine i call him mushroom head oh, okay. if you look at his head it looks like a mushroom mushroom head um yeah no um what was i Right. Sorry for sorry for the, but sorry if I lose my um lose my train of thought. Um yeah, so he gets bumped up from cadet to full on officer. Right? And the captains they are given the whole speech and motivate the whole set and he pulls up late and then just like vomits out nonsense. Embarrassing her, himself, and causing me to fucking cringe so deep inside myself. Mm. It, you understand? So yeah, it's Kafka. It's it's hilarious in some senses and then it's like it's a bit much in others. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really need to learn to read the fucking room, my guy. Yeah? So that's the thing with Kafka. In terms of everybody else, uh, it's fine. Um, the white here done. Kafka's bridging. Um, fuck with him, heavy. He's squadly. Um, and the rest of the mandem as well, you could see they're all, like, you know, even though he don't have the, the ability to, like, utilize the suit and, like, do what they can do and, like, perform as well as they can do, you could see that whatever it was about him, um, they appreciated enough. So everybody was trying to do what they can to keep him um, in the squad and, you know, prevent him from being like murdered. You understand? So, um, yeah, I fuck with how squadly they are. Um, again, Kafka has to kind of bear the brunt of like, shit I, I don't like because it's usually just involving him. You know? Okay. Okay, now I hear that. I hear that. You know what I'm saying? W coverage. W coverage. Um, I had a next question. What was the follow-up question? So, longevity. How long do you think Kaiju number eight is going to be here? Um, <clears throat> based off the showing that you've seen, based off the hype you've seen online. Are we talking your... anime or we're talking manga? Again, however you choose to interpret the question, my bro. All right. So, I could be wrong on this, but I feel like I've seen it recently that they're saying that Kaiju's in its last chapter, last arc as well. So, it seems to be a lot of that going on. 
Um, so clearly it's not going to be here for that long because it's quite a recent fucking series. Uh, how much we could get out of it in terms of anime? Uh, I don't know. Probably a hundred or something chapters, maybe, depending on how much stuff's there, but I don't fully know. Uh, I'm anime only, so uh, I haven't read the manga. Um, I'm just like fully new with like the anime and shit like that, so I can't tell you how many chapters there are or anything like that. Uh, we're talking about like fandom longevity. Um, I feel it's too early to say for me, personally. And again, I'm anime only. I've only seen the first 13. I don't know how much shit picks up later on, how many new kaijus come up, how the characters develop or nothing like that. So I, it's, it's hard for me to say right now. Um, but I can see us getting more kaiju if it's as popular as it seems to be. I can definitely see us getting something consistent for at least the next five years. So, so projection wise, you think it's gonna have the staying power to be here for at least the next five? For at least the next five, yes. Okay. It's gonna be hopping enough to be here at least for the next five. But um, again, if if the way people talk about it online is anything, and how everybody was kind of like excited for the anime being released and everything like that, if that kind of stays, the moment if the momentum stays with it, um, I can see it during the next five years, kind of like a demon slayer kind of thing. You know, so demon slayer popped up one day and it was just like the shit, and it's gone again. Okay. All right. No, that's a fair projection. You know what I'm saying? That's a fair projection. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose my next question then would be, after it's finished, what do you, like, Like, how, how do you see it being remembered so far? Like, once it's finished? If it is going to be finishing soon, and I, and I say soon in quotation marks, how do you think it's going to be remembered? Because obviously there's, re- there's already talks online of people calling it the Temu um, Attack on Titan. <laughs> you get me? So <laughs> after it's finished, and so since when does Attack on Titan have a monopoly on the flesh maker genre, fam? I'm just like, bro, like, you're, you're going to have to argue with the AOT fans on that one. You get me? You're going to have to argue with the AOT fans on that one, boy, because to the best of my knowledge, bro, mm. AOT didn't monopolize, like, piloting giant fucking humanoid things. You get me? No. Like, and obviously, goes about saying that there's nothing, like, nobody's piloting a giant kaiju right now. You feel me? But obviously, the internals of when, like, he's inside the fucking kaiju number eight, mm-hmm. that does give Attack on Titan. It's reminiscent you know of Attack on Titan. I can see but, that, sure. Yeah, so I suppose that's why the question is, once it's finished, how how do you think the fandom will remember it? Will it stand up on its own, do you think? Is there enough there to distinguish it from Attack on Titan? Or do you think people are really just going to group it in with, um, hey, it's time to move Attack on Titan? You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. It would have to have a catastrophic fall. I'm talking something akin to Seven Deadly Sins to get that level of fucking vitriol directed at it. You know what I'm saying? And I haven't seen that from uh, um, Kaiju. I haven't heard anything really negative about kaiju number eight online i haven't seen it i really haven't seen that you know what I'm saying? usually the twitter man them usually it, it's a circle of firing squad on twitter right so it's dragon ball man them I going mean, after bleach oh, man them yeah i mean obviously you're gonna have to you're gonna have to let them and me know because i'm not on twitter you get yeah, but yeah so it, it's usually a circle of firing squad dragon ball boruto one piece bleach jjk you know what I'm they're just kind of like all taking pots other. I don't really see a fandom like that for Kaiju number eight as of yet, mm-hmm. but they're probably there. Um, I don't see anybody calling out Kaiju number eight for anything like that. I think, think I think the only time I've seen, the only negative criticism I've seen of Kaiju number eight so far is the flesh mecha thing. You know what I'm So them comparing it to AOC or calling it like the budget AOC or um, AOT, AOC, sorry, AOT. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's and it. do you think it's going to eventually develop its own fan base, like its own strong fan base in time? Or do you think it will kind of be a situation of, All hey, I'm saying is I haven't seen it. You know what no, I'm no, saying? No, cer- I am certain it exists already. Like the fan base for Kaiju number eight, I am certain it's already there. You know what I'm saying? The glazing I've seen, like the one and two times, like subreddits, a uh, couple of things on Twitter. Sure, but not enough to like be a community. You know what I'm saying? But I'm certain that the Kaiju number eight fans are already there. They're already among us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll know it's a real thing when I see, like, fucking kaiju folk pop up on Reddit. Uh-huh. You know okay. what I'm saying? Or kaiju people Twitter or some shit like that. And, um, so real quick, real quick. Um, what are the odds of us getting up to, like, maybe a kaiju number 15, based off what you've seen so far? Kaiju number 15? Yeah. It's like 15 different kaiju? Named kaijus. Uh... Because obviously by the start of the series, there are already strong kaiju that have already been deceased. You mm-hmm. get me? Obviously, number eight is our protagonist. Right. Number nine is a top up. Mm-hmm. We saw number 10 get packed up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what are the odds of us getting up to maybe like a Kaiju 15? Um, I think we need some more intel on the Kaiju for that. At the stands right now, we just don't really know where they're coming from. Um, I sort of feel like Kaiju number nine had something to do with number 10. 
the way he was carrying on. Mm. You understand? So if he's able to create these die kaiju, because, you know, light spoilers, Kaka weren't born a fucking kaiju. He got turned into one. Mm-hmm. You understand? So he, if he's manipulating that, then the possibility of more kaiju, numbered kaiju, numbered kaiju popping up, it's very, it's very high. You know, so if it's just like somebody gets infected and turns into a kaiju like Kafka, that's quite high. But if there's more, if there's a more natural or organic way of them die kaiju coming around, um, that hasn't really been revealed yet, boy. So I don't know. But if it stays like a Kafka, where they can just like infect people and turn into kaiju, yeah, you might see other people pop up. All right. sense, so not not unfathomable. All right, cool. I mean, obviously, thank you for letting that man just pick your brain on kaiju number eight and that and obviously that mm. was for the people them listening as well so didn't want to get too deep into it for like spoiler shit you know what i'm saying mm. but we did want to give you enough to understand okay cool that's what you can kind of expect from kaiju number eight that's mm. kind of mm. our thoughts on it that's where we were at with it and um yeah we're gonna round out that segment there you know what i'm saying keep it fresh you know i'm saying brand new anime we were talking about and coming up next is jjk we'll catch you in a second and we are back feel me we are back we're gonna be talking about jjk this time I uh, can't remember. I feel like it has been a little second since we discussed JJK fully. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I believe Gege went on um, a little hiatus because yeah, of his health. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, okay, cool. We're back with the JJK. I don't know how abreast you are in the recent chapters. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but the question I had is, I mean, where are you in the recent chapters? Have you seen it? Uh, I've caught some stuff on it, but I'm not caught up with that yet. Um, I knew that we got like a smaller chapter just before the Gege break and then this chapter's kind of like the continue. No, wait, that was before. So this is a whole fresh new chapter now. Isn't it? Yeah, so all right, cool. Full disclosure then, I'm a chapter behind. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. where we are currently in uh, 263, I believe, and obviously spoilers for anybody who's tapped in of JJK, spoilers, you feel me? Um, where we are in 263 is, it does seem like this is where Soko no Gekko got. You feel me? It does seem like this is where Mr. Four Arms drops himself. You get me? Because um, it's Todo, Yuji, and Gojo. And by Gojo, I mean Utah using Gojo's body. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's those three versus um, Sukuna, right? And the last chapter ended with Inumaki throwing a fucking recorder next to Sukuna's face. And you, you, you know what Inumaki's ability is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so he yeah. threw a recorder next to Sukuna's face. And obviously, of course, that immobilized Sukuna. You know what I'm saying? And as it immobilized Sukuna, um, Yuta was charging up a hollow purple. Right. By the start of this chapter, that hollow purple has now gone off. You get me? Mm-hmm. Cool. So Sukuna has taken considerable damage. You feel me? Still on his feet in typical Sukuna fashion. So is Sukuna missing now? Is, is Sukuna now a member of the Donut Club? Uh, a member of the Donut Club? Why? Uh-huh. Why? You know what hollow purple is supposed to do? Like, rip yeah. like a perfect sum three. Like, yeah, but... If he, it was a point blank range, you should be a member of the donor club. He's so kind of. So, yeah, long story short, where we are right now is um, Sukuna just been hit by a um, hollow purple point blank, I do believe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, boxing with Yuji and Todo. You get me? And ultimately, he gets hit by Jacob's Ladder again. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And Jacob's Ladder being um, a curse technique by Angel that basically eradicates curse tech, like anything to do with curse, like curse energy that it hits. You feel me? Right. And this would be the third time that Sukuna has been hit by this attack. You feel me? The most interesting part of the chapter, though, is the fact that Yuji, mid-boxing with Sukuna, mm-hmm. figured out how to place all of his blows to directly hit the barrier between Sukuna and Megumi So. You get me? So Yuji now understands how to do that and has been doing that. You get me? So with how that chapter is going, I suppose I had two burning questions. You feel me? Mm-hmm. One, is this the fucking end of Sukuna? No. You get me? Cool. And um, two, what is the final gambit on uh, Megumin? What are our final thoughts on Potential Man? Because as it stands right now, don't get me wrong, whereas initially I kind of thought in order to kill Sukuna, you'd have to kill the body as well. Mm-hmm. It kind of, like after my going back and looking over some chapters, it has come to light that, okay, cool, the intention from the get-go was always to damage Sukuna enough to the point that he loses control of the body. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. He's not going to die. He's not going to have to die in order for Sukuna to die. You get me? But after they beat Sukuna, what are our thoughts on how Megumi is going to be used? Ah, good question. I really don't don't know, you know. Um, Especially with the caveat that allegedly what's going on right now mm -hmm. is the final arc. Yeah. You got me? Mm-hmm. So if what's going on now is the final arc. Right. So what, what I think is going to happen is they're going to weaken Sukuna's soul. Right? Weaken the, the, the hold he has on, on Megamin's soul. Uh, Megamin's going to snap back and then try some of Maharaga again. 
Why, 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 why do you think that? Because <laughs> that's all my fucking thing. Oh, I'm just going to go off and just get up and just like, Maharaga again. It's like, oh my God. All right, cool. So, all right, cool. That was a low blow. Um, but no, seriousness here it is, right? Um, I honestly don't know. How do you utilize somebody who's been shown to like lack the will to go to go on? Even if they even if they manage to successfully separate body from spirit. A good point. You understand? This this man has been on the floor curled up with like no fucking will to move. Mm-hmm. You and, know I, and I suppose that's kind of why I'm asking the question. I suppose that's why I'm asking mm-hmm. the question. You get me? Because it's like, yes, cool. You can save Megumin, right? But in the state that he, we saw him in last. when last, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? What what part in the story would Mega Man be looking to play right now? From like a story story making perspective, like a story making standpoint, what usage would Mega like would Mega Man get right now? Like the majority, you like the strongest parts of your story, objectively, whether you like it or not, is you being possessed. You get me? So I'm like, I mean, all right, cool. I think most people would like to see Body get a lick back now. But that's like, what I'm saying. Like, actually, I'm like, spin back and like do something. Well, my whole thing is, it's like, cool. If this is the last arc, and we're as far in as we are, and we mm. still haven't separated the body from fucking Sukuna, mm. even if we do that in the next couple of um chapters, what the fuck meaningful shit can Megumin do right now? You know what I'm saying? For niggas that were mad at like Yuji's um usage, I want to hear them niggas speak to fucking Megumin's because I'm like, whatever you do with Megumin right now, I'd be highly confused. Not gonna lie, it's true. You get me? Highly true, confused. True, true. Not gonna lie. So I'm like, yeah. Thoughts? What like like what do you, what do you see them doing with Mega Man? Because me right now, I'm gonna go out on on a limb and say I do give credence to the idea that he's gonna come back and potentially turn evil. It would be a dope little fucking twist but to me. How though? But you just mentioned it. We're in the last arc. So how because, long is this last arc gonna be lasting? Like because with where the last chapter ended, it does look like Sukuna's losing control of the body. You know what I'm saying? And part of Sukuna controlling the body was him subsuming himself in a ritual that basically allowed him to completely, like, destroy fucking Megumin's own will to live type shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you separate, so the theory is, if you separate Sukuna from Megumin, yes, you successfully done that, but the Megumin you're going to get back will be an entirely different Megumin. You get me? By mm-hmm. virtue of the fact that he's cognizant of the fact that, A, uh, my will has been broken by the fucking ritual. You know what I'm saying? And B, you had to watch passenger ship while Sukuna used your body to kill your sister. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that's kind of the driving force behind people thinking when we get back Megumin, the whole I have no will to live, no reason to live thing is mm-hmm. going to get taken to the next level and be like, okay, cool. With how much I, I have lost. to live for, basically. With how much I have lost. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? Like, what am I even fighting against anymore type shit? You feel me? So I'm like, me personally, I can still see an avenue for that happening. If that doesn't happen, I'm confused as to what the fuck Megumin's going to be doing post like I, 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 I can't answer that. I really don't. I really don't know what you're going to do with that guy. I really don't know what you're going to do with that guy. Um, so the choices are he either becomes a wet wipe forevermore or he becomes a fucking top up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and storyline wise, I think it's more interesting to have him as a fucking up than as a wet wipe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if they do do that with him at the end, then so be it you know i'd be happier with that than him just like you know moping around for the rest of the fucking series all right cool cool all right and final question you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. this is to do with um utah you get me okay what do you see happening with Utah post this whole engagement do you think he's going to remain in control of gojo's body or do you think we're ultimately going to lose utah too we might lose utah too didn't he pass out yeah, he passed out, but he's hit like the brain is still active. As in, even in the monologue on the screen, they mm. made it a point to let you know that he's still talking to himself while the, like Gojo's body's passed out on the floor. So it's not like he is dead or anything. The brain is still active. He's just kind of realized, yo, there's a like the fucking Kenjaku CT, me using limited, um, unlimited purple. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I thought I fucked the name of that. You know what I'm saying? Unlimited void. Him using that burned out the fucking um, CT, um, Kenjaku's cursed technique. You know what I'm saying? So as a result, that's why you see him pass out. So he's just temporarily just kind of recouping the fucking energy type shit. Well, at mm-hmm. least that's the assumption. You get me? Mm-hmm. But even once you get back up, after this whole engagement, irrespective of how it goes, do you see Yuta coming out on the other side of it? In a series where niggas yeah, are... Yeah, like, because he, he might need to be the Gojo going forward, isn't it? But I don't know if he's gonna, that's going to be inside Gojo's body or on his own body. But yeah, I could, I could see Yuta carrying on. I mean, Rika's still there. Okay. You understand? Rika's still there and she hasn't really done anything so far. I mean, I if mean, anything, she not, is... Not, not, not so far. When he was fighting Gojo, she was there. But like, as it stands now, when... Bro, I am talking all types of shit right now. I'm so sorry. 
when Utah was fighting Sukuna as Utah, so in his own body, using his own domain expansion and everything, Rita yeah. was there. Yeah. Right? But since he's come back as Gojo, he's not been, she's not been on the pitch and that had to assist. Anything, they have made it a point to purposefully show you her um, cradling his body. You right. Know what I'm saying? In the sense so, that's what I feel like. He, he'll, he'll probably come back as Utah mm-hmm. and then go forward being like the Gojo-esque character. So is that, is that, is that the premonition you're stamping, yeah? Yeah. You know the Gojo's stamping out here, bro. What is it? Go south? Go south? If you have... If you have um, yeah, I mean, some shit like that. Yeah, go, then, go south if you have some shit you still feel like you need to do. Go north if you're ready to like leave it as it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think he was going south, so... Nigga, maybe. nigga, like, you go north. Yeah, but yeah, go so north. Gojo, it's, it's Gojo over. I'm it's saying. Gojo over for Gojo, but Utah, yeah. I, I, I see, I can see Utah um, still being alive at the end of it. All right, all right, cool, cool. I ain't gonna lie, we've exhausted all of my questions for um, this chapter, you get mm-hmm. me? That, that was 263 for anybody that wants to stay tapped in, you get me? Um, anything else to add? Uh, no, like I said, unfortunately, I'm a chapter behind on this one, so I can't really um, input too much. Only to point out that you know, um, my guy Toad was still here. Oh yeah, I mean, obviously Toad like, is still like, actually... body still hanging in. I, I respect that. I mean, he did some actual crazy shit. This chapter, I can't lie to you, but it's just a bit too much to get into right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that being, I mean, Kuma tried to in and out it. So, man used Boogie Woogie to fucking teleport with shards of a destroyed fucking domain. So, you know, like, you know the whole, you know the whole visual aesthetic you see, like, when domains are fucking shattered? Like, mm-hmm. the glass um, um, effect that you see? Yeah. Whereas, maybe we thought that was just aesthetic. It turns out that's actually, like, a physical-esque thing. And so, what, physical... you reckon that can impale somebody? Like, you're standing in the wrong space, you can just, like, type you in half or some shit? Type shit, you get me? I imagine, you feel <laughs> okay. me? Like, fucking okay. cursed glass, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Energy <laughs> okay. glass, I guess, you get mm-hmm. me? But yeah, um, he was able to use Boogie Woogie to fucking transport, um, teleport with individual pieces of the broken fucking shards that in the domain expansion as they were falling, which effectively meant that he could teleport him and fucking Yuji and um, Angel all over the fucking place. You know what I'm saying? Caught Sukuna um, off guard. It's actually how Angel caught Sukuna um, off guard in the last panel of the fucking chapter. Mm, how I hit with Angel. Um, you know obviously, now, yeah? mm-hmm. he goes to switch. Um, Sukuna thinks he's going to switch with Yuji. When he doesn't switch with Yuji, Sukuna turns around at Yuji ready to fucking punch. But then he finds out that the switch was actually with the sis. You know what I'm saying? Angel. But yeah, no, that's where we are, obviously. Said I wasn't going to go into it, went into it anyway. Type shit. But yeah, cool. Uh, JJK, stay tuned for next um, chapter. You get me, shit's cooking. Shit's like heating up. And uh, yeah, yeah. Finally, we're going to get around to uh, Boruto. You feel me? Catch you in the next segment. And we are bike with the next segment. Obviously, if you're still here with us at this part of the podcast, don't forget to sub up, like, comment, all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? It helps the algorithm. And uh, we're going to be discussing Boruto. You feel me? I'm going to allow Zero to take point. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So we got a sneak peek for Chapter 12 recently. Have you seen it? I have not. You I have, have not. not. So it's the equivalent of what happened with um, JJK for you. So I'm like, okay. a, I'm like a chapter behind. Mm, okay. Well, it's a sneak peek. It's literally just one page. All right. Um... What happens is you get a quick exchange between Hidari and Boruto. You see Boruto using his sword to block Hidari's sword transformation thing that he does. Uh, and then after that, he uses some wind, new wind technique to push back Hidari. Uh, it's not it's not a new technique, the wind palm thing. It's what he uses to blow back Naruto before he has Kawaki kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so more, more like a more powerful version yeah. of it. Then. I mean, yeah, All right. cool. Um... Yeah, so he, he does that. So a lot of talk online is that Boruto's using Orochimaru's technique. That being? Huh? That being? The wind style um, breakthrough. It's Orochimaru's technique. The one that he used on Hidari. The one that he used on Hidari and Naruto. Oh, yeah. I think it's fucking bugging. Oh, yeah. yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, now you see him use the same attack, bro. It's what he used to blow back Naruto, literally. Yeah, but apparently he picked it off of Mishiki. And I mean, Mitsuki, if Mitsuki picked maybe, it up, I mean, it's, it's from a, I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. if we're trying to distinguish the attack that it was, we've seen him use it before, type sure. shit, you feel me? But yeah, sure. go on. So, yeah. So, I just want to see how you are feeling about that, then. The theory that um, Orochimaru is or was working with Boruto and Sasuke. I mean, I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this theory slivering around, as it were. You know okay. what I'm saying? 
because um, I think there was a chapter where um, Boruto and Kashi and Kojin go to like a layer, like an underground layer type shit. Right, and, one of the Orochimaru shit you know bases. Yeah. And because it was super snake themed, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A lot of people were like, this is in like, in all likelihood, one of Orochimaru's bases, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And then I believe the discussion was, okay, cool, the fact that we see them there, it can be inferred that they are being aided by Orochimaru. Right. But my whole thing was this, boy, I've never really never really um, put too much stock into that mm-hmm. because them simply being in a location that was formerly um, in use by Orochimaru doesn't necessarily mean that Orochimaru is directly aiding them. You get me? True. They made like, they, they might just have fucking have knowledge of where one of his former on use bases were. Right. Because Sasuke actually, was with him for like, what, two, three two, years? Three years, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Three years, you know what I'm saying? Around three so it years, could have yeah. just been like an on use layer that, mm-hmm. thank you, Sasuke knew about, right. you know what I'm saying? And, to me, them simply being in that location and using it as like a base of sorts, a hideout of sorts, mm-hmm. doesn't conclusively prove that Orochimaru in the Leaf is still directly aiding them. He's not. Yeah, he's again. not in the Leaf. He's still in his own sound village. Um, okay, my bad. I mean, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, so, but yeah, he's so. he's not directly helping them. Is what I'm saying. You get me? So yeah. I don't personally subscribe to that fucking school of thought, boy. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna completely discredit it. You get me? All right. So if it comes to pass that that was what's happening, how would you receive it? I'd be like, cool, because there was enough that like there was enough setup there. That's what I'm saying. Like the scene, like the panels of them being in the underground snake looking layer. Mm-hmm. Yes, that does infer, okay, cool. This is a location that could lay, like show you that they have one well, ties to Orochimaru. You mm-hmm. get me? It's just mm-hmm. you didn't see Orochimaru in that panel. True. There's been no communication between Orochimaru and them. So at present, I have to just look at it like, hey, they were just using an unused location that they knew of that belonged to Orochimaru. You right. get me? If it mm-hmm. came to light that Orochimaru really was helping them behind the scene, then it wouldn't be completely hard to believe, wouldn't be um, unheard of, because right. then you could look back at the panel and be like, okay, cool. Well, that's why they had access to this underground layer that he used to use. Mm-hmm. You get me? So as I'm like, do am I rolling with the idea? Not currently that um, Orochimaru is directly helping them. But if it came to like that he was, there is enough set up there in the panels that we've seen prior right. for it to not feel like it's coming out of left field. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's, it's not a left field decision type shit. Okay. You know I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the way I was looking at it, it's like, if you recall our last conversation on Boruto, the last episode, and I was saying like, you know, maybe it's time to pull back a bit. Like Boruto's had like, Stop the coming, dick up suck, to, bruv. coming up to 12 episodes of straight fucking shine. Stop the dick suck, bruv. You know what I'm saying? So... If we if 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 true, if he is working with like Orochimaru, mm-hmm. that means that this brother Boruto, I mean, right? right, he's been trained in some way, shape, or form by two at the three legendary Sanin, right? Plus Sasuke, plus Naruto. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So it's like, how deep is his bag gonna get? I swear to God, before I answer that question, though, I am going to circle back around at some point on the podcast and address niggas calling Jiraiya Kashin Kojin. He's a clone, but anyway, go on. Well, that's what I said in some way, shape, or form. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't say like directly trained by the time, but like in some way, shape, or form, like he's been like for aided me, by at least two of the like, Sanin. Like for me, I'd, I'd, I'd be more comfortable with saying, hey, you were you were potentially aided by a Sanin in um, Orochimaru, mm-hmm. and obviously you were like trained by a clone of the sun. You know what I'm saying? Like you being a clone of the um, Jiraiya doesn't mean you are Jiraiya. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's just my whole thing. It's always been like a little thing for me. Where you're going? Mm. No, I'm saying so like basically how how deep do you think Boruto's back is going to get at this stage? This, if he has all these kind of people around him. I mean, I'll put it to you this way though. Like even if he has been trained by all of these people, it doesn't mean all of them have mm-hmm. like offloaded deep bags onto him. In Not in the same way that Sasuke has. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. I'm like, if, if, training with these different parties like for example if his training with Kashi and Kojin for example only taught him um, flying Raijin mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying maybe that's all his training with Kashi and Kojin. I don't see like Sasuke I think he'd be able to train and teach him that I think that or the, like, or the Uzuhiko you know what I'm saying that's what I'm saying so I'm like tra- I feel like training with I need um, to, I, I, sorry I need to put in um, Kakashi in that as well because I completely forgot that he's the one that helped him develop the um, compression Rasengan and but that, but that's pre time scale. We're talking post time scale. Post, you know mm? what I'm saying? But that's pre, not post time scale. You okay, feel me? So that's enough. what we're talking mm-hmm. about now, post time scale. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, who who we think. Well, um, Boruto, Naruto hasn't trained him for post time scale either. Exactly. So, I mean, that's, that's why I, mean, I was just talking about people, I mean, significant people that trained him. But um, Hokage, Hokage, Hokage Shadow, Sanin adjacent, and Sanin. I mean, I right, cool to reach their own. Mm-hmm. Um, for the purposes of this discussion, I'm not counting anybody that trained him pre time skip because mm-hmm. whatever training you got pre time skip, it's not really going to serve you. Like, it, it didn't really serve you in the moments where you needed it. You know what I'm saying? Whereas okay. post time skip, the shit that you've been taught has come in clutch more than a few times. All right, cool. You get me? So, on that note, then, 
my question is the way Boruto was portrayed in, in, in Two Blue Vortex now. Yeah. Is he the guy we want to see Naruto as? Not me, no. Huh? Not me, no. The bro. way we want, the way we Not like. Not me, no. Bro. He pulls up, he's stoic, he's fucking, he looks fucking fire. Every time he comes up, he's always, every time he's on screen, he's all just like one up in somebody. So I would posit, I would posit anybody who feels that way this. Why did you like OG Naruto? Why did you like Shippuden? Because if what you wanted from Naruto back mm-hmm. then, or Naruto in Shippuden, was for him to be stoic, then you wanted Naruto with two Sasuke's. <laughs> you wanted <laughs> you wanted Naruto with two Sasuke's. You get me? Like the dichotomy, the difference between the two of them is actually what makes it hit. You feel me? One of them is like, yo, I ain't shit without my people. That's Naruto. The other one is, hey, I'm the last Uchiha. I'm nice all on my own. You get me? Mm-hmm. One of them has to be this stoic ass nigga, that being Sasuke. You get me? If mm-hmm. you take that personality trait and you apply it to Naruto, yikes. You know what I'm saying? If you take that trait and apply it to Naruto, just not really as interesting of a character anymore, is he? Right. So you're saying you wouldn't, you wouldn't have liked it like that. If Naruto was like that. If anything, no. I think it's a benefit to Boruto's fucking mm-hmm. character mm-hmm. post time skip. One of the reasons we like him so much right. is because of how different he is to his father at those ages. You know what I'm saying? He, Boruto, acts super stoic. He acts like a fucking, um, he acts like an Uchiha. You get me? I was going to ask, is not, is not too much like Sasuke now then? Man said Sasuke, bro. I've seen man, I've seen a lot of people say online, it's like, bro, the, like, the vibes that he gives is Itachi. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Star Wars, super yo, I'm going to be in the dark about this shit. I'm committed. I'm nice with the techers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I was like, cool. One of the reasons I think people like Boruto post time skip is because his demeanor is the opposite to who his father was at those ages. You get me? Even though he's heavily influenced by Naruto. You get me? Even though, yes, he's like heavily influenced by Naruto and obviously Hinata and Himawari and them people there, his character post time skip is the furthest thing from Naruto. You get me? Mm-hmm. I am laser focused, laser focused, no jokes, no ha has, no. I'm going to do it with all of my friends. No, I understand that it has to fall to me. Mm-hmm. Get me? And I suppose in that regard there, that's when I'd call him like a Sasuke ass little nigga. Get me? That's when I'd call Boruto a little Sasuke head ass boy. You feel me? Because that is Sasuke in Shippuden, early day Shippuden, if mm-hmm. I ever saw it. You I have me? to do it myself. Yeah? I have to do it myself. <clears throat> you feel me? That is Sasuke, he's early day Shippuden. Well, he's, not, he's, not, he's not on a power trip, so we can... We can... Like, for now. Be thankful for that. He's not on a power trip. For now. You get me? Mm-hmm. But yeah... um, I hope those. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, no. So not everybody would appreciate that. Um, I do wish that Bor- Naruto in Shippuden, for example, would have gotten more moments like how Boruto's gotten. But in terms of like being that guy, I like Naruto the way he was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Say no more. Say no more. Yeah. So yeah, that that's it. Yeah. Okay, Doc. Um, if that's everything from the from the Boruto segment, you have anything else to add? No, 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 we're good for Boruto. Same so way. it was only one page, so no real leaks here or anything like that. Was just that one page out, and I just like you know thought, all right, cool. You know, just ex- look look at that theory a bit because before you only, the only evidence you had was just the hideout, the hideout. Now you have the hideout and the technique, but as people have been pointed out, it's a technique is used before. Mm. You understand? Know so it's not some new thing that directly correlates there. So you know. Okay, though. All right. Well. That's my thoughts on Boruto. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you ain't got nothing else to add? No, no, we're good on that. Say no more, say no more. It's been KTT episode 14. Catch you, man, in two weeks. Love. <laughs>